Hey everybody! You'll notice I'm outside of my normal recording space today and that's because I wanted just a little bit more room to show you what I've got going on. And what is it I've got going on? I'm glad you asked. Do you have an XR series mixer? Do you also have an X-Touch controller? And would you like to be able to control your mixer with that control surface, but wirelessly? I thought you might. So let's have a look. You can see I've got my other phone here. So here is my X-Touch. Um, there's an iPad so you can see what's going on and there's the mixer and a speaker over there. You'll notice there is no cabling running between the two. Um, here is my master fader. Here are my first four inputs. You can see that those are working. The other ones here are effect returns and buses. Uh, I'll show you what's going on there. There's two returns and there's two buses just so you know that's all working so there's my first fader uh check check oops master fader's not up uh, check 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 so you can see that that's actually working it's coming out of the speaker and i'm going to turn it down check 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 magic it's wireless but james how did you make this happen what wizardry is this well, I'm glad you asked that question too. And I'm gonna show you this setup. It's very simple. And honestly, I'm kind of annoyed at myself for not thinking of it earlier, but here we are. Okay, so let's pick up the other camera and have a look at the individual pieces of this puzzle. So here, of course, is the X-Touch, the iPad, the X-Air, and this is what's making the magic happen right now. This is a TP-Link network repeater, and you can see it's got a network cable there, and that network cable is attached to the back of the X-Touch, and the only other thing attached there is power. So the other really cool thing about this is I'm not using a secondary network. I have this TP-Link connected right to the network of the X-Air. So there is no intermediary software or hardware here. This TP-Link is just repeating the network that is coming out of the mixer. So you could put this anywhere. I've got it on a short little mic stand. You could have it on a tall mic stand anywhere you want. And that gives you the ability to wirelessly control your mixer. So now let's get into how this all works. Okay, so I'm gonna jump in and say this really quickly for everyone. Even though I have the repeater connected directly to the internal router of the mixer, it's probably not something you should consider doing live. The mixer itself is notorious for having a weak antenna and for having a not very powerful internal router. So if you decide to use this live, it's very likely you're gonna get stepped on by any other 2.4 network and all the people using their phones in the venue. Can you do it? Yes, you can. Should you do it? I wouldn't, but that's up to you. Keep in mind that everything I'm gonna show you on how to connect it to the internal router works identically for using an external router. It will also give you the ability to do a 2.4 and a five gigahertz network. Now, with that said, let's get back to the video. Okay, before we step through each part of this setup, I would just wanna mention why I'm using this particular TP-Link Wi-Fi extender. It's not that I have any real allegiance to TP-Link. Um, there's just three reasons I'm using this one. One, it has high gain antennas, which is gonna help hold my connection. Two, which is very important, is ease of setup. It comes with uh, an app that you can download from the App Store and it makes it dead simple. And three is price. I paid $89 for this and uh, that's not too bad as far as I'm concerned. I will link this in the description so you guys can grab one if you need to. But what I wanna say is that you don't have to use a dedicated Wi-Fi extender. You can use any old router you have laying around as long as it has the ability to bridge connections or to be a repeater. Um, that could save you money if you have a couple of old routers laying around in the house and you don't have anything to do with them. You can use it for this. If you do decide to get a Wi-Fi extender like this TP-Link, just make sure that it's universally compatible, meaning it can connect to any other router or any Wi-Fi signal that you have access to. Some extenders need a dedicated host device because um, they're part of a larger mesh network. So some ones that look like this TP-Link, they're actually just nodes and they don't have any way to bridge a connection unless it is with their host 
matching device. So just make sure you get a universally compatible one or use your own router. Okay, so here's the next part. Assuming you're using this TP-Link and that's how I'm gonna do this setup. I'm going to talk through it with TP-Link. Just keep in mind that you don't have to be setting it up directly to the built-in router in the mixer. You can use these steps to connect this TP-Link to any network that you have running. So the first thing to do is to go to the App Store on your phone, look up TP-Link Tether, and of course, download it. Once you've done that, the next step is going to be connecting this to your existing network. And here's how we do that. Set your um, TP-Link close to your original network. So in this case, it's reasonably close to my XR mixer, as you can see on this other camera. Um, then of course, you wanna make sure that it's turned on and you're gonna wait for the lights on the front um, to do their cycling. And when your power button is a solid blue or your power light is a solid blue, that means you're good to go to the next step. And of course, the next step is going to be looking for this device in the Tether app. The first time you go into the app, it might ask you right away to set up a user account um, and password. It might not. If it doesn't ask you right away, it will ask you to do it during the setup of the device. You might as well do it ahead of time, um, unless you don't really care about interrupting your setup, but it's, it's just easier. So I've already set one up. I'm gonna log in. And once you're logged in, the next thing you have to do is actually go out of the app and you're going to go into your network settings, your Wi-Fi settings, and you're gonna look for the Wi-Fi that's coming off of the extender, and it should be called TP-Link Extender. So join that, and once it is connected, you're gonna go back into the Tether app, and it's going to look for devices on your network. If it doesn't find the device automatically, you can click the plus sign, and then you can step through the prompts to find your device. As you can see, mine's already recognized, so I'm going to select it. It's asking me to log in, but I've already done that. Oh, so what it's doing is it wants a local account because you can have multiple devices set up at multiple locations. So this is a way for you to differentiate from one location to another inside the same app under the same username. Um, so once you've logged in, once you've found the device, and you set up a local account, it's going to show you all the wireless networks that are available. And what you wanna do is find the network that you want the TP-Link to connect to. In this case, it's the one coming off of my mixer, and that is called XR16. Um, so I'm gonna to connect to that, click Next. Now, this one, it, it's gonna step you through a 2.4 and a five gigahertz. The mixers don't have five gig. If you were setting this up for an external router that was dual band, then you would be able to do this for five gigahertz as well. Now I'm gonna skip this step because there isn't one to add. Um, I've set it up with no security for now. So uh, meaning that the, the network inside the router is not asking for a password, it's just open. I do not recommend you use that method in a live place. Even at home, truthfully, if there's anybody in close proximity that could gain access, not likely knowing how strong these mixer routers are, but it wise words anyway. I'm just trying to make this super easy and quick. So it's connected, it's going to repeat it, and there's no password to get on the network. It's gonna apply the settings, and then it's probably gonna reboot the extender. Okay, once it's done setting it up, it did not in fact reboot, it just applied the settings. It might not be the same for you. If it's not, don't worry, just let it do its power cycle and you'll be fine. Now it's asking me if the location is good. What this means is generally when you set this up, you set it up in close proximity to the network router that you want to emulate. Once you've done that, it's not likely you're gonna keep it in the same place. So at that point you can um, unplug it and plug it in somewhere else that's near your dead zone because this is typically for a home to fill dead zones because that doesn't matter for us I'm just going to say location looks good because this is just going to move around within proximity to the mixer itself anyway 
um, all set, done. And so now it's telling me that Tether wants to join the network that it is emulating. And you'll notice that it's added an EXT to the end. So that's what this does by default, is it takes the name of the network and it adds EXT to the end. So you can differentiate between the main network and the extended network. Now you can connect to either because they're on the same network now, it doesn't matter which Wi-Fi you're connected to. And this is just a way for the app to let you adjust settings inside the TP-Link extender if you need to. We don't need to. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go out of this and now we're gonna talk about the setup that you need to do inside your X-Touch. Okay, to set up the X-Touch to work with this, we need to make sure that we've got the um, connection mode set to um, XCTL and we need it to be set to network instead of using MIDI, MIDI cables or USB cables because obviously we don't want that, we wanna be untethered. So um, I'm gonna switch the camera here. I'm not gonna use the other camera just really quickly to show you this setup because it's too hard for me to hold the camera in my other hand and do this at the same time. So one second. All right, if you're not familiar with how to change the connection mode, this is how you do it. You're gonna hold the select button on the first fader strip and power on the device. This puts it into setup mode. Now I can pick up the camera. So you'll notice here that we've got mode, interface and network. So the mode can be XCTL. You could also do Mackie control and, and human user interface, HUI, but you probably shouldn't. This mode works the best with these mixers. So mode is XCTL, your interface is network, and you can do this one of two ways. You can either do a slave IP or you can set it to DHCP. Um, so DHCP will do a search, it'll get signed an address from the mixer and then it will make its connection. However, the way that I suggest doing it is going to slave IP and then setting the actual IP address of your mixer. Now, how do we find out what the network address is of our mixer? Let's talk about that next. So in the case of the XR mixers, there's a couple of very simple and quick ways to find out what the host IP address is of the mixer. The first, um, if you have either your iPad or your iPhone and you go into your networks and you choose the network that your mixer is broadcasting, if you click on it and scroll down to the IPv4 address, you'll see the IP address that you have been assigned on the device you're using to look at it. In this case, I'm ending in 1.107 for my phone. But the router, which is the mixer itself, has an address of 192.168.1.1. Now, that's not necessarily what yours is going to be, so don't just copy my numbers. Actually use this method or the other method I'm gonna show you to figure out what your IP address needs to be. But it's going to be the one that's listed as router. Once you know that number, you can put that into the X touch and that will connect to your mixer. So the other really easy way to figure this out is on the iPad um, and having it connected to the same network that you're broadcasting from your mixer and then opening the Xair edit software. So you can see right here, it's actually showing um, my mixer is being available and right underneath the picture of that, it shows what the IP address is. So we know that the IP address for sure of my mixer is 192.168.1.1. So that's what we put into the mixer for connection. So looking back at the mixer, you can see 192.168.1.1. Now, if that is correct and we know that it is, you hit select that confirms the choices we've made and then you wait for it to connect. It can take a minute, but there you go. You can see I'm connected. So now we'll just open up the iPad app. We'll actually connect and wait for the iPad app to get caught up. Um, if you're familiar with all the nonsense that's been going on with the Xair edit, you will notice that things are a bit laggy with the app opening up. Um, it does work, but don't be surprised if you see some lag here. So now that we're connected, you can see that I'm making moves with the faders 
See, there's that lag I was talking about. I promise you that it is actually operating in relative real time. There's always gonna be a little bit of latency because we are using a wireless um, network connection, but it is working with such minimal latency that you won't notice it. Um, you're just seeing the latency here on the app because the app itself is slow to respond. But there you go, you can see that we have access. Let's see if I go into my channel and I set this to gain and turn this up and down. You can see that my gain is moving. So yeah, we're connected. And again, I will show you, look, there's the network cable and there's the power cable. We are connected network into the side of the TP-Link extender. We are connected power into this uh, little power bar that I have. And actually I should just explain that too. The reason it's directly like this is because this is meant to go into a wall and not be connected um, any other way. So that's how it gets its power. You just plug it right into the wall. So in this case, I've just put a power bar upright so you can connect to it. And that's it. You can see it's connected into the wall right next to that dead plant. And that's it. So this is the moment where I say, okay, I understand your whisperings that I, that I can hear through the internet right now. Yeah, it's not truly wireless. Um, we are connected to a network extender and we are connected to power. So there are two wires. But if you think about it in the context of a live event, or even if you're using it at home, the only thing you actually need to be close to with your control surface is power, which you would need regardless. Um, obviously it's not quite as wireless and free as walking around with your iPad, which definitely has its benefits. But if you're a person who likes to have tactile control, this is an amazing way to do it. If you've got a large venue and you don't wanna to have to run network cable um, from front of house all the way to the stage or however you intended on connecting. This is a really simple way to do it. It's cost effective. And with these high gain antennas, if you actually use an external router instead of the built-in router, also with high gain antennas and something that supports five gigahertz, you're probably gonna find you have a really stable connection and this is gonna work out well for you. So there you go. A cost-effective and easy way to turn your X-Touch control surface into a wireless control surface for your XR mixer. Um, I hope this was interesting. I hope it was educational. If it was either of those things, please be sure to like and share and subscribe. Check us out on Patreon, all the normal stuff. And until we see you next time, thanks for watching here on Quick and Easy Quickies. Bye.